I was recently doing a phone consultation and the question came up, how do professional athletes use the heart rate data that comes from the Garmin platform? Let's take a look at this great question. If you have followed me for any period of time, you know I'm a huge fan of the Garmin platform. I'm not a brand ambassador, I'm not on payroll. I pay for all my Garmin devices and scales and heart rate monitor straps. But I am a huge fan of Garmin because of the amount of information that's available to you and how the reports are consolidated to make the interpretation of the data very, very easy to understand and more importantly, how to incorporate it into your training. When I was asked this question, how do the professionals use heart rate data to improve their training, to maximize their training efforts, to get faster race times? I wanted to share with you some of the things that we do with our professional athletes. And I wanna ask, I wanna challenge you are, you, are you using the data the same way to the fullest extent? If not, I'm hoping this video will, will shed some light on it for you. I want you to think about a high quality speed workout or a high quality um, interval workout or a race itself. The beautiful part about Garmin is as soon as you start an activity, you're gonna be getting every tidbit of information that you need with the exception of your body weight. Now, if you have a Garmin scale, what I just said won't be true. If you have a Garmin scale that's available, you step on the scale before you start your workout or your race, you step on the scale immediately afterwards with dry clothing on or as close to naked as possible. Outside of that, when you start an activity, I want you to go into the activity itself on the Garmin dashboard. And the way you do that is go into activities, click on the specific activity that you want to evaluate, scroll down past all the graphs and you get into what we refer to as the five columns of stats. Now, look at this from top left that's gonna give you your total time. This is very advantageous because let's assume that you started your watch right at the beginning of the race or the high quality workout and you did it as soon as you were done. You've got a very specific snapshot in time. What's the duration of that time? It's gonna be important in here in a moment. Now look directly below that. It's gonna show you how many calories that you burnt, both active and non-active. They call it resting. but Think about it, if you're at a track or you're doing a workout, let's say you're doing a running workout and you're at the running track, when they say resting, it's not like you're taking a nap. You're just, whatever your rest interval is. So I wanna make sure that you're, you're picking up on that. You've got total time, you have calories burnt. You come over to the next column and it shows you what percentage of that was aerobic and anaerobic. They use it on a scale of zero to five. So just multiply everything by 20 and you'll get kind of a rough percentage. When you go below that, now you've got average and max heart rate. Now this becomes incredibly important when you're looking at, am I, there's a couple ways you can look at this. If you're a runner and you're at the track and you're trying to work on improving your, your run speed, and let's just use six minutes as your ideal race time for an upcoming 5K. That's 90 seconds per quarter. So you're at the track trying to run 95, 96 second quarters. Excuse me, I said that incorrectly. You're trying to run 85 or 86, just slightly faster than your desirable race pace. That's the smart way to approach speed work. Not trying to go 30 seconds faster, just slightly faster. It's beyond the scope of this video as to why, but for illustration purposes, you're at the track, you're running 85 second quarters. You've been able to do that now for two to three weeks with no problem. Well, all of a sudden today, you notice that today's a very difficult for you to be able to hit that. Keyword is hit that pace. Well, this is where as, a, as me serving you as a physiologist, I've got to figure out what is your average and max heart rate for that session of intervals. If we convert it to a race, are you going as fast as we know that you've validated in training? If not, this is where we get into what we do as an analytics company. Why was the workout harder? Why were you not able to hit the paces that we were able to do over the last couple weeks? Why did you not hit the lap times that we thought you were going to be able to hit during a race? I mean, we can go through a lot of different scenarios, and I'm trying to be 
short because I don't want this video to get overextended, but think about all the information is at your fingertips on this Garmin dashboard. If you look in the top right hand corner, it's actually going to give you the temperatures that your body was dealing with during that duration of time. So literally those stat columns are giving you a 100% snapshot on duration, calorie expenditure, average and max heart rate, percentages aerobic and anaerobic, and then in the top right hand corner it gives you temperature. If you are using running, you'll notice in the top right hand corner, you're actually going to get your stride rate. Elite runners run above the 180 range, just as an FYI. You can use that as a benchmark. If I know when we're doing our 60, excuse me, when we're doing 400 meter, 440 yard intervals, I know that your leg turnover is usually around 190, 195. I'm just using this as a hypothetical. If for some reason today you're not able to, this is where the dashboard becomes an incredibly invaluable resource for you because I don't want your psych I don't want you to psychologically think that you're starting to lose speed, you're starting to lose endurance. It's always about we know you're capable of it because we've seen you do it in the last couple of weeks. You've come to the track and you've run 16 quarters and you've been within a second of those from your fastest to your slowest, no more than a second deviation. All of a sudden now today things aren't going well. This is when we start looking at your calories, we look at your hydration, we look at your sleep quality. These are all things that contribute that need to be in place before you get there. That's what's contributing to either a good race or a bad race. That's what's contributing to a good workout or a bad workout. It's not a fitness issue. It could be a preparation issue. It could you might not be having a great day at the workout or the race. It's not a fitness issue. It could be a stress related issue. It could be something as easy as you're easy to resolve because you're dehydrated. That's what I wanted to get across here. How do the pros use the Garmin dashboard? And I, I, I'm very cautious to use the word could, would, and should. Well, if I know over the last couple of weeks, using the running example, if I know that you've been able to do 16 quarters and you've done them all in 90 to, let's say from 85 seconds to 87 seconds, and now today you're running them in 90 or 95 and the heart rate's higher than usual, there's something going on inside your body. If you're dehydrated, your heart rate will be artificially elevated. If you're tired, if you're agitated, if you're under a lot of stress, let's say you've got marital issues, let's say you've got financial issues, let's find out you find out someone in your family is sick, that's going to have a negative impact. It's not a fitness issue. It's an external variable that we have to take into consideration. This by no means is, am I saying that we're coddling you. It's about maintaining your physical confidence. Think about how, what I just said. You're physically capable, but the mental confidence is getting jeopardized because something is causing your performance to be subpar. Let's always find out why. Particularly when you start to see it trending. It's not just one bad day. It's three to four bad days a week. Then it becomes five to six bad days. Then it comes six or seven bad workouts in a week. How long do we let that go before we start to really analyze it? So I thought this was a brilliant question that came up and I wanted to share it with you and I hope you found it helpful. If you're new to this channel, I want to say thank you for stopping by. Thank you for giving it an opportunity to hopefully shed some knowledge on uh, the Garmin dashboard itself. Please do me a favor, like and subscribe. We deeply appreciate it. We put out a video every day here on YouTube, so I want to make sure that you're one of the first to know. And if I happen to create a question or you have something that we might be able to dig down on and, and answer a frustration, please feel free to reach out to me. Contact at CoachRob.com. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.